So in this video I want to cover installing the Google Cloud Tools for Eclipse and showing how to run the App Engine server runtime in Eclipse in the local environment. So let's get started. So first I want to go to the Help Eclipse Marketplace and we're going to search for Google. All right, so we're going to search for Google and find the Google Cloud Tools for Eclipse plugin. So here we go. But before I click on install, by the way, there's two favorite stars at this time. I'm hoping to see more because what I think this says is, hey, hey, thanks for developing this plugin. And so I recommend going and installing that and saying thanks. Okay, so let's get going and install the plugin. All right, accept the license, finish. And it's installing the plugins that are a part of the Google Cloud Tools. We're going to restart. Okay, so now it's restarted. So now what? There's a couple steps that we got to do before we get going. So let's look at what that is. But before we get there, I'm going to just point out, here we go, create a new project, sign into Google. Uh, we won't be able to use these features yet because we, we need the Google Cloud Tools SDK installed on the desktop. And that basically brings down the features of the cloud or the APIs into our local environment. So let's look at what that is. So I know where that's at already. So I'm going to go Window Preferences and we'll search for Google, Google Cloud Tools. And here we go, Google Cloud SDK Location. And so what we want to do is click on the second link and look at those features that we want. The features in this, well, let's just double click on the top here to expand it, maximize the window view. So we want the App Engine SDK feature. So if we look over here, we have App Engine Java. This is going to be the component we want for the SDK. But for before that, we have to install the SDK. So let's click on installing on, on the left there. And so I'll scroll down. There's several ways you can install this. You can download the, the zip, extract it, unzip it, and go in and run the, the execution script. Or there's an interactive installer, and this is one of my favorites because I've done it on a Mac and Windows, and it's pretty slick. So first of all, we're going to download the SDK installer. I'm going to run the SDK installer. So now that we have the SDK installer installed, I'm going to go ahead and install it. I'm going to click Next. I agree. I could select my user. I'm going to keep it on my user because this is a Parallels account, VM. I'm the only one who uses it anyways. So let's get, I'm going to do the default path. I like doing default paths because it makes it easier to maintain. And beta commands. I, I think I'll, I'll keep that unselected for now. Install. The SDK is installing. All right, so the SDK has installed. So we're going to click the next button. And it looks like the finish. Okay, so now we got to do a couple things here. You must log in to continue. So would you like to log in now? I'd like to log in. Let's get and I'm going to log in. And what's my secret password? All right, I'm going to allow the SDK to have access. Now that I'm authenticated to the Google Cloud, I can use the features. So what does that mean? So let's look back at the command prompt. Oh, and it looks like it wants me to select one of my projects. So I'm going to select number two. Okay, so we're all done installing the cloud SDK, but there are a couple other steps we got to do. Let's check that interactive installer. Let's go back to Eclipse and just double check. After the installation is completed, accept the following options. Start cloud SDK shell and run gcloud in it. So I'm going to copy gcloud in it. I think it just did that. Uh, I can't copy it. I'm going to go back to the command prompt. Hold on a minute. For, 
I'm just going to gcloud init. Basically, what gcloud init does is okay, so it just did what we just did is gcloud init. So it, the interactive installer automatically ran that. So I'm going to control Q or control C and exit that. Now that we have the cloud tools installed, let's install the App Engine component. So we'll go back to Manage SDK Components. And once we get there, we'll copy the command to, to install the App Engine component. So we want gcloud components install App Engine Java. So let's copy that. All right, we can type that in. Let's go to the command prompt. And since I'm in VM, also gcloud components install. And then what do we have? We gotta figure out, oops, forget Windows likes to do that. So let me scroll down so I can see what I'm typing. App in engine Java. Oh, and I failed to type it in right. So I made a spelling typo. We'll correct that. And now that we got gcloud components install app engine Java, it will install the component. Now there are other components here that would be nifty to install, but I won't cover those today. So as it installs, it's gonna ask me more goodies. Okay, I wanna confirm. It looks like it has some dependencies. So I'm gonna say, maybe call those transitive dependencies. Okay, so the components are now installed. So we're gonna press any key to continue. That exits the terminal, and we'll go back to Eclipse and finish our setup. So let's open up Eclipse. Oh, this was Eclipse. That was a browser. Okay, so now we have the App Engine component installed for the Cloud SDK. So we're gonna close this. We're gonna go back to the Preferences. So we're gonna go Window Preferences. And look, it auto-detected where the cloud SDK was installed on my hard drive. Okay, so I want to also men mention the statistics. If you share anonymous usage statistics, this is like saying thanks for building the plugin to the contributors. Now, you may not want to do that, but I like to do it because I, I, I like looking at the stats, the folks that use my plugins. I only have one that I actually maintain, but it's nice to say, hey, look, there's people using it. Let's keep contributing. And it also says, thanks. Um, I'm willing to share my stats. Now, you don't have to do that, but I like to do it. So, OK, so now we've got everything we need to actually build a project. OK, so now that we've got the Cloud SDK installed, I mean, and the App Engine component, we can actually create a project. So let's go and create a App Engine standard project. Now there's other projects you can create, and I won't go over that right now. So let's start with an App Engine standard project. So let's name it My Sandbox Project. Something simple. And then we need a, a Java package. Let's go comma gone vertical sandbox. Actually, I want to put server because maybe I'll add a, a client side to it later. So server.sandbox. And we'll use the App Engine API. Well, let's just, we won't use endpoints today, but maybe we'll use Objectify later. So, hey, I might as well check this. Nah, better not. Okay, so now that we've selected our properties, we'll install default. Okay, everything looks right. Finish. Okay, so now that we have a generated project, let's look at the project structure. And before I get there, I like, this is a Java EE perspective. Let's switch to Java. It gets rid of the descriptors over here. So I'm gonna click Java, click OK. And it actually simplifies the look on the left or the package explorer view. So here we go, the packages. We got Hello App Engine. See what that is. Oh, it already opened it up. That is a simple servlet. Do we have any tests? 
we got a couple tests. Let's see what the servlet. Okay, so we've got a mock servlet response. Excellent. We got the App Engine API container, which is basically showing me the jar easily. Objectify, JUnit, and App Engine. So this is basically the class path or libraries that are available on the class path. So we can replicate the remote environment that we're going to deploy to. So that's that's the main feature of why I want to install this or have the App Engine API available so I can replicate everything locally. I can work offline, run offline, and then deploy it to the cloud and have it everything work as I would have it work on my local machine. So everything is emulated locally. So here we have the web app folder and App Engine X. App Engine Web XML, which is the descriptor or directions on App Engine features that we want to run. So let's click on source and see. We got thread safe as true and session enabled. And you, there's all other, all kinds of other properties you can turn on or turn off by um, adding XML here. So the Web XML is basically the servlet container descriptor, and these are the directions for telling how the web server should behave, such as I want a welcome welcome page, and if I come to the root directory, I'm going to go to the index.html file. Okay, so now let's say we want to test this and run this as a project or a server or on, a, on a server on my machine. Let's go to the debug environment and see what we have. Once we have the debug uh, perspective open, I like to drag the server's view and separate it because I'll have both the server running and maybe some other processes for my build environment. So let's add an App Engine server. So it already expanded Google App Engine and I've already installed the runtime by installing the Cloud SDK. We can double check that by saying, oh, the plugin actually installed it automatically already, has it available. So I'm going to select the App Engine Standard Runtime, select Next. Here we have my App Engine Sandbox, that I, or the Project Sandbox that I've created. I'm going to click Add to that server. You could have multiple projects in one if you wanted. All right, so now I've created my server, which will run my project. So simply, all we have to do now is click right click on it and we can basically debug it start it we can publish and clean I won't cover those features but basically if I click debug I'm able to set breakpoints on the server sides or servlets and they will break in this runtime environment and we can set breakpoints and inspect the variables and the stack of that uh, that inspection so let's go ahead and start and see what we got for our, our sandbox project. All right, looks like we got some Windows firewall. We'll just say allow access. The project is starting up. So down here, if we look in the console output, we have links that we can click on. We have, oh, it's going fast. So. We can, we'll scroll back up once it's started. Okay, so now it's started. It opened up the welcome page and shows me some, I can click on the servlet and go to the servlet as well. So let's just look at the console and maximize view by double clicking on it. We'll scan to the top and you can see we have some different links we can click on. We have the localhost 8080, localhost 5422, which is the API server. And we can click on the admin server, which is 8,000, which we can play around with. Uh, let's go ahead and click on that, see what we got. Here's the App Engine emulated features that we can turn on and off. This is nice for inspecting such as data store data, the indexes that we create, which we put in the, uh, in the web manifest. Okay, so let's just go back to the console view and see what we got here. So this concludes a video of how to install the Cloud Tools for Eclipse plugin and start up an App Engine server. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. I'll release some other videos on how to use some of the other features.